In John, 1 John 3, 1 says, See, the Lord, the love of the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are. Welcome to Really Living Center, uh, all of you that are watching online. And uh, it's so great that uh, through these ways of online, we could uh, reach different areas of this world. All around the city of Hamilton, they've been watching us. All around the province, or even the country of Canada, or who knows, around the world, God has power. And uh, it's so great that even though we could not get together, we, our, the word of God it could reach to all, every corner around the world. For those who doesn't know me, my name is Alex Gonzalez. And uh, around five years ago, I got the privilege to meet a wonderful people in the city of Hamilton that they love the Lord and they want to be the instruments so we can spread his love on the city of Hamilton. Uh, I'm your servant on the church, and uh, we want to study today. So, but before we study, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, because uh, we could get together to read your word to study about you, and to study about the kingdom of heaven. Lord, I ask you in this moment that you cleanse me, forgive me for my, all my sins, so we could be a clean instrument for your word. Lord, we wanted to, as me, will be the one who will speak today, but let be your Holy Spirit who touch the hearts of the persons that by the end of the service, everybody will remind your name. Everybody will resound on, the, on their minds the name of Jesus Christ and his love and what he did for us. Thank you, Lord, for what you're gonna, you, will, you will do. And thank you, Lord, because you're being with us here in Hamilton and everywhere that, is, uh, that everybody is watching, every, in every house that everybody is watching your word. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. We are in a series. This is the third week of a series of Jesus, the Storyteller. Lessons from Parables. And uh, last week, Pastor Ventus guided us through the second, the second uh, parable of, of Matthew 3. Sorry. Um, Last week, Pastor Bento guided us through the parable of the sower. And, um, and there we saw that uh, in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus tried to explain we have different type of soils and we have different type of persons. And that, uh, we, that Jesus wants to spread his gospel, his good news to everyone. But... Um, but different person will react different. And, but God's desire is to all of us, we, we could be uh, good soils, so we could produce fruits for the kingdom. Today we will study the second parable of chapter, Matthew chapter 13. Pastor Benton uh, spoke last week, the parable of the sword, that was the first uh, parable uh, we found in Matthew 13, and today we'll study the parable of the wheat and the tart. I want you to I want you to see that uh, on Matthew 13. I want to invite you today, before we keep going ahead, that uh, you can I will give you time that you can go and get your Bible because today we may go through a lot of readings. Uh, on, of God's word, and I don't have every verse on this slide, so if you have a time right now to get your Bibles, it's the time to do so. Uh, we're going to go in Matthew 13, uh, to, we will find the parable of the wheat and the tart. Oh, 
on as as I was saying on Matthew 13, it start it start like that on verse one. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. So it's, it was in my mind that uh, that it, Jesus he was doing something else on, the, on that day. So that made me to go into Matthew 12, which I do not have on the slide, uh, but I will guide you through it, what happened in, on Matthew 12. Matthew 12, we found Jesus on a Sabbath, walking with the disciples, and the disciples, they were hungry, so they decided to grab some, some grains of wheat to eat. But the Pharisees, which are the Pharisees on Jesus' time, they were the people who were studying uh, the scriptures. They were the ones that were they decided to study fully, as a full time, the scriptures. So they were considered the, the people who understand the most about God's word. And so the Pharisees, they gather, they get an encounter with Jesus and start discussing with Jesus if it was good for the disciples to harvest on the Sabbath. And Jesus get the opportunity to teach. And then we keep seeing on the Matthew 12, Jesus keep encountering with the, with the Pharisees. And, uh, and the same day, Jesus, after that encounter, he went to the synagogue. And he, the, the Pharisees, they were trying to say if it was good to heal on the day of the, on the Sabbath. Jesus never lose opportunity to teach. And he started explaining how that is good to heal on the Sabbath. Jesus knew that the heart of the Pharisees, they, wasn't, they didn't want to learn. They weren't trying to plot against him. And they weren't trying to find uh, a way to find some guilt on him and some fault on him. But the multitude start gathering and follow him and learning of his teachings. And um, the Pharisees start plotting against Jesus to destroy him. Because it was a lot of multitude that they were following and learning about his teachings. Jesus was teaching about how the kingdom of heaven is like. But the Israelites, they, have a, they had it, a different mindset of what type of kingdom he, they wanted the Messiah to be. The Israelites, they wanted it a kingdom that they will make them free from the Roman Empire. But Jesus never lose the opportunity to teach. So they were teaching to the, he was teaching through parables about the kingdom of heaven. Now we see Jesus sit, he was sat beside the sea in Matthew 13. That was what happened in Matthew 12, uh, how Jesus was a few times encountering with the Pharisees and teachers was taking the opportunity to teach to the multitude. Now we find at the beginning of Matthew, Matthew 13, Jesus is sat at the sea. I'm guessing, and this is not on the Bible, but I'm guessing that he needed a connection with the Father. He was relaxing out of this long day that he had it teaching and encountering with the Pharisees. But, and then he start, but we see that the multitudes found Jesus and they start gathering around him again on the same day. And uh, Jesus, like I said, he see the multitude and he start teaching again. The multitude was so great that Jesus had to go into a boat and sat on the boat and the multitude gathered around the seashore to listen to what Jesus was saying. And that moment is when Jesus started talking, telling the parable of the sower that we saw yesterday. We saw last week. But today, we're going to concentrate on the parable of the weak and the sower which is found on Matthew 13, 24, and 30. 
And I will read for you, and you can read it on the screen as well. Another parable he put, he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who saw good seed in his fields. But while men slept, his enemy came and saw tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain has a sprout and produce a crop, then the tars also appear. So the servants of the servants of the owner came to say came to him and said, Did did, did you not sow good seed in your fields? How then does it has tarts? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said say to him, Do you want us to go and gather it up, gather me up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tars, also you up the roof, the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of the harvest, first gather together the tars and bind them into a bundle to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. It's so interesting because Matthew gives us, that's the parable of the tarts that Jesus talked told the multitude. But if we could read, I invite you to read it on verse 34, Matthew gives us a little bit more insight because Jesus told another two more parables on these chapters. And it says, all those things Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables. And without a parable, he did not speak to them. That it may be fulfilled, which has spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Matthews guide us and say that Jesus wanted to teach the multitudes. Tell us that through parables, God, Jesus wants to teach about the kingdom of heaven. We see that he starts, the kingdom of heaven is like. That's the parable of the third. I guess all you understood. But Jesus didn't left us there. Let us go to verse 36. And says, Then Jesus sent the multitude away. He went into the house. Remember, this is the same day. Jesus was on the church. Now he went in. He sent the multitudes away and entered in the house. And his disciple came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tart. And he answered to, to them, He who saw the good sea is the son of man. The field is the world. The good sea are the sons of the kingdom. But the tarts are the son of the wicked one. The enemy who saw them is the, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tarts are gathered and burned into, in the fire, so it will be the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather up and of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice Lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. Then will be howling and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has here, here, let him hear. Even though Jesus had it a long day, even though Jesus he was encountering with the Pharisees and was teaching the multitudes, he always had a time to teach and teach the, key, the secrets of the, of the kingdom of heaven. It was not a secret because God didn't want to reveal to them. It was secrets, as we hear Pastor Francis two weeks ago, that their hearts, they wasn't ready. Their hearts, they were hardened. But even though Jesus had it a long day, he took time without 
question that to tell, teach the multitude true parables. And at Matt, actually, Matthew 13, teachers give seven, seven parables. Four, three, uh, four given, given to the multitude and three given to, this, to the disciples when they enter into the house. What a great love and patience Jesus showed to the people. Even though he was at the shore sea trying to get connected with his father, I believe. When he see the multitude, he started teaching to them. Out of this lesson, out of this parable, sorry, um, Jesus explained it, right? And then we see that he started the explanation saying that the sower, the, the owner of the field, the sower, is the son of man. Jesus, you should, that was the best um, name he, tried, he put to for himself, for Jesus himself. And it intrigued my mind when I was studying, uh, because we see on the gospel that Jesus used this term as the son of man for himself a lot of times. And uh, I believe he took it from Daniel 7, when Daniel saw the envision, the kingdom, and he saw the son of man coming, coming into earth. And that intrigued me. So the son of man, it's himself, it's Jesus. And then we see that uh, the fields are the world. The world, he mean he wants everyone to, to understand. But we could understand that he tried to explain that in the kingdom of heaven here on earth, um, not only we wanna, he gonna, we want to find wheat, as we see here on the field, it's a, it's a field mixed with wheat and tarts. And uh, if we see uh, the wheat and the tart, as when, they, when we see the readings, they said when they... When they the master saw his, the wood seat, he went to sleep and an enemy came to it. Jesus tried to explain that no, no in his kingdom we're going to have some tarts or, or wheat that uh, the, he don't plant it. That was the enemy who planted. And uh, we see here the difference between the wheat and the tart. They are really similar. They are really almost look the same. And then we don't find the difference until they produce fruits. And uh, the wheat, the fruit of the wheat, as we know, uh, it's a little bit sweet, and is, we use it for a lot of things. But the tarts, it's a poison, it's a poison it that it won't kill you, but it will give you stomach ache and maybe give you diarrhea. And it's bitter at, at the taste. And uh, at the Jesus time, even though the Romans empire, they were um, persecuting the person who used to do that. They used to uh, throw bad seed onto the fields of an enemy because they, they had problems between them. And the Romans, they used to uh, persecute that. Uh, but one thing I want you to, to see this is that uh, even though the servants, they wanted it to pull it, the tarts, when they saw that it was growing, the master said, no, leave them there. Because as well that like you are trying to pull the tarts, you may out truth the weed. And uh, it's so interesting because Satan, who is the enemy, how does Jesus describe it, uh, he, he has no power to destroy the wheat. He has no power to, to touch God's people to kill God's people. But even though he, can, he cannot destroy the wheat, he will try to put problems into it. So he plant tarts. And Jesus, on all his love, he tried to teach us and show us that even though he tried to gather, he tried to grow of wheat, you will find tarts in, in the world. And we could use it in our churches too. Uh, our churches know all of us, we are wheat. 
And then we see that uh, when we go to Matthew 7, and I don't have it on the slide, Mikey, uh, Matthew 7, verse 22, they says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not professed in your name, cast out demons on your name, and done many wonders on your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. You see something similar, how God described those ones that they were, profess- they were doing great things for him. They were maybe coming to church and reading his, their, his Bible and maybe feeding the homeless, but they didn't knew Jesus. They didn't knew God. As the Apostle Peter told us too on 2 Peter 2, verse 1. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. He warned us the same way. 2, verse 1. But there will be false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them, or bringing on themselves shift destruction. So Pastor Apostle Peter, he warned us at the same way that in the church we may find uh, tars that have been planted by, by the enemy, not by God. Pastor, uh, Apostle Paul told us too in 2 Corinthians 11, 26. 2 Corinthians 11, 26. 2 Corinthians. Eleven twenty six. In, jo- in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in peril in the city, in peril in the wilderness, in peril in the sea, in peril amongst false brethren. He, they are warning us about that in God and the kingdom of heaven, we will, we will, in the kingdom of heaven on the earth, we will find thoughts. We will find people that... Uh, uh, thinking that they are doing it for God, but without knowing, knowing Him, uh, they may cause problems among us. Uh, as the tart and the wheat, they're growing together, Jesus told us, let them grow together until the end time. And he, Jesus is referring on, on uh, that the end time at the end of the ages, as at the, end, at the time of the harvest. But He told us, as the servant asked, do you want us to go and remove it? And uh, they told them, no, leave them grow together until the end time. But um, even though the tart may cause problems into the fields and try to choke the wheat and remove the nutrients of the soil from the wheat, uh, God wants us to grow together. As wheat... Our goal is not to uproot tarts. Our goal is to grow the kingdom of heaven in earth. Even though we may see, even though we may find in, among our neighbors, on, on this world, or in our churches, uh, the goal of the wheat is not to point it out a person who is doing it wrong. It's not to judge who's doing right or who's doing wrong. Our goal is to grow and grow together with the tarts. And even maybe just by the love of God, the person may change into it. So, but how we could do that? How we could, because it's it's hard on us or it's hard on us or when some people is gossiping about me, or some people is doing things that hurt me, 
how can be a wheat, how can uh, no focus on, on, on pointed out and, and gossiping around other person has doing wrong about me. But Paul is teaching us on Rome, Rome 12, 21. If you go with me on Rome 12, I don't have all the slices because I wanted it to, uh, we could use the, the Bible, we could use them, and uh, we can learn, learn to flip the, the pages. And we've been not only readers of, of the world, but study the Word of God. It's Rome 12, verse 21, the last verse, he said, Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Paul is telling us that even though we could find evil persons, let's just do good for them. But Jesus' love for the tarts is the only thing we can transform into wheat. Jesus' love is what it may transform us. It will transform us. And uh, God knows and he warns us about that we will find tarts among his people. But he, the focus of his people won't be to uproot or remove the tarts. That's that task God has given it to the, to the angels as we saw in the parable. And that will be at the end of the times. And, and I wanted to bring, a, bring you to uh, Sephaniah. Sephaniah is a small book in the Old Testament. Um, Sephaniah 3 Verse 12. And he says, I will, live in, I will live in your midst, a meek and humble people, that they shall trust in the name of the Lord. That's the characteristic of the wheat. A meek and humble people, that they will trust in the name of the Lord. He who has here to hear, let him hear. 